the whole little situation just caught us off guard. Mm -hmm. We did we did not see it coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you having if he was had been a kid that uh, was being disrespectful to his parents, uh, uh, staying out all night and all and all those different type of things, we, we probably would have. Kind of, it wouldn't have been such a shock to them to say, "Well, you got in trouble," but uh, it didn't happen like that, you know. Uh, we just going on along with our regular life, and then all of a sudden, all of this just started unfolding, you know, right before our eyes, and, and it seemed like once it started, it wasn't nothing we could do to stop it, you know. Uh, FBI come in and, you know, uh, I was at work when, when uh, my wife had called me and told me that uh, the FBI had come and confiscated the car and, well, first thing I did uh, uh, is I called Napoleon and I said, Napoleon, why, why are they taking, why are they doing that? And uh, he said he didn't know, you know, and uh, so I stayed at work, and it wasn't until probably about 7 o'clock that evening that my wife called me again and said that I needed to come home. And when I got home, that's when uh, she told me that the FBI was looking for him because of, uh, they was uh, accusing him in some case. And, and I mean, tell you, just, you you really don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. Well, the first thing, uh, before you went home, he went to his grandma's to spend the night. So uh, now we got to go try. To, I, my first impression is I got to go find him. And uh, I get to Crockett. And he's not at his grandmother's. And so, uh, you know, I'm kind of panicking right about now. I got to, I got to find him. And uh, uh, I think I went to the police station and they say, uh, we need to find him before he hurt himself. You know, well, oh my goodness, what do you mean he, before he hurt himself, you know? So I don't know what's going on today and giving me no information. So I'm running around Crockett trying to find him. And, you know, and uh, by the time I find him, you know, I'm probably going, um, you know, I've uh, done just about lost my mind, but, uh, you know, we go to the police station and, you know, they release him. So we think it's over, over everything's gone, but when three or four hours later they come back again, you know, so it, it, it was just a whole whirlwind situation, you know, and uh, all that night, uh, up until, well, a wind, we finally, after all of the trips up and down the road and everything, they decided they're going to arrest him. And, uh, you know, and uh, that's when I, you know, we find out what they're accusing him of and, and what the other two boys have supposedly pointed the finger at him and all this good stuff. So, you know, what can you do? You know, I lied. Well, my wife is at home, and I'm 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 dealing with all this, and uh, and so I'm thinking, what can I do? All I can do is follow them. They're gonna take him to the tower. So I say, well, I'm going to. You know, I know I ain't got no game plan of what to do. I ain't got no lawyer. I ain't got. I don't know what's going on, but. You know, I'm following them to Tyler because they got my son, you know, because I know my son ain't nothing, nothing like that. You know, I know they got the wrong person, you know, and, whew, and, uh, but, uh, the health was there all night. I didn't sleep at all that night. Uh, and, you know, they never did take him to jail, but, uh, next thing you know, they, they got him up there in that courtroom next morning and they're charging him and all this good stuff, you know, so it just, everything just went wrong all of a sudden, 
all that good life that we we was been experiencing the years before, it went just kind of went south. Now, personally, why I say that because in '89, I was blessed to my job to become line supervisor. So financially, I was bringing in more money than I ever bought in my life. You know, things were going good, but bills were no problem. Uh, Maria, uh, she had already graduated, so we were. I was able to to. Uh, financially support her to get into Rice University in Houston and now you know Poyun's uh, he's he's getting ready to graduate graduate he's decided he wants to go to the Marines he's going to try to be a lawyer all those good things you know that's why I say life was going good mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden this all of this comes up so you know we, we're headed down a different road than than I had been prepared for, and it just, it just, I don't know what to say. It, 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 I don't know, it, it, it can't remember, I just can't remember how, what I was thinking about, I, and, but, and I, I really just didn't know which way to turn. I did not know what to do, you know. Now that I look back on it, 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 it's possibly some things that we could have done that may have could have prevented some of this. Yeah, you know, because I think like I've just looking back, I think I think that the justice system just took over and did whatever they wanted to, the way they wanted to, and and as you look today and you know what's what's going on and how you see a case here of cases where where things that went different because they had people had lawyers to get in there and defend them you know stuff like that uh, it's I think that if I'd known some of these things back then I probably could have it's I ain't gonna say it could have been avoided but it may have been you know I don't know